welcome back to Jody Journals. My name is Jody, and today we're going to do a mini paint with me. I got this mini notebook from the Handbook Journal Company, and it's three and a half by five and a half inches. Here I'm showing you the Jelly Roll pen so you can see how tiny this actually is. And the paperweight is 130 GSM. It's not a particularly textured artist paper. It is made for watercolor, however, I will be primarily using them for uh, gauche painting or gouache painting. Um, inside it has a little bookmark, which is great, so you can sort of flip open to your next open page. And I added a mini binder clip just to keep the pages where I want them. Um, that was a little sneak peek of what we're going to be painting today. We're going to be doing a floral motif using my new gouache set. So thanks for being here and I hope you enjoy. So the first thing I'm going to do is write my name in the notebook, um, just because I like to put my name in my notebooks. Not that they leave the house ever or I would ever lose them, but uh, I don't know, it's a little ritual. Uh, it was always my favorite part of school when you got all your new school notebooks to fill out my name and of course in my bullet journals. It's one of the, my favorite things to do. It's almost like welcoming it into my life. Um, I've sketched out a few different types of flowers on this little page and I'm using one of my small point brushes and um, I'm mixing up a bunch of different greens to make different flowers. The first set of flowers I'm gonna be painting are gonna resemble Cosmos. I love Cosmos, I love how vibrant they are, and I love the shades of pink. One of my favorite things about painting flowers is creating all the different shades of green for the leaves and all of the different leaf shapes. It's really fun to do. In this instance, I'm starting off with a dark brown-ish green, and I'm sort of feathering the paint out on the leaves. And later I'll come in with a lighter green to add a little more texture after this first layer has dried. For the petals, I am doing five petals and I'm doing a very similar technique where I'm just feathering the paint out and I'm leaving the edges raw so that they look a little roughly. And later I will come back in and add in some deeper pinks toward the middle of the flowers. Now that the first layer on these little cosmos are dried, I'm coming back in and I'm adding in a darker pink to give them a little more dimension, uh, just how they appear in nature. So I'm using a darker pink and then I'm mixing it with the pastel pink to sort of blend it out toward the edges of the cosmos petals. Next I'll be starting on painting some cattails. Um, they're grass-like plant and so the leaves are very long and lean. The technique I use for creating these leaves is I start uh, very light pressure and then I press down harder in the middle to make the leaf wider and then I slowly pull the brush up. Um, it's a similar technique to uh, hand lettering if you've ever done hand lettering and um, you try and get those thick and thin brush strokes. It's really easy, it's really fun, and then later I come back in and I add some lighter green stripes to give each leaf a little more dimension. Next I'm going to be painting the cattails themselves and I'm using a very dark brown and using the tip of my brush to sort of stamp the color in, in that cylindrical shape. Later I will come in and add a little lighter brown to give it that fuzzy look. I love cattails, they're kind of like the forbidden hot dog. <laughs> I don't know if anyone's seen those videos of the people biting them and then they fluff out everywhere, but I think they're very beautiful and um, fun to paint and they're quite easy and you can get a really nice impact. That's what I love about painting florals is you get a very big impact with not a whole ton of effort. Mm -hmm. 
here I'm adding in some flowers that look a bit like maybe lavender or even a lupin. I started off with a deeper reddish purple and then I added another layer of a lighter purple on top just to give each bloom a little more dimension. Now I've chosen an orangish color that I'm using for the middle of my cosmos and to add that fuzzy look to the cattails. With the gouache paint, you do need to let each layer dry in between if you're hoping for more contrast. If you don't want more contrast and you want more of a blended look, then definitely add paint onto wet paint. Um, I came back in and added sort of a brighter orange to the middle of the cosmos and I'm just sort of dotting the paint around the edge and in the middle. Now I'm headed back to the leaves over on the lupins and I'm using a similar technique to what I did with the cattail leaves where I go thin, press down to make it thicker and then thin again. However, instead of going straight up and grass-like, I'm jutting the leaves out to the side. So now that I have every shade of green known to man mixed on my palette, I'm going back in and I'm choosing different shades of green to add different textures to the flower leaves. Um, the last type of flower we're going to paint will be a vine-based black-eyed Susan. There is a whole fence of these at uh, my old job and every spring I look forward to the bright orange blooms and so do all the kids and we love to pick them and use them as honeysuckles <laughs> and also use them as uh, temporary art. So one of the things that I would do with the kids is we would pick the different flowers and we would grind them up using mortar and pestles and sort of mix them with water and make potions and paint with the different color juices and um, it's just so fun. Flowers are such a beautiful way to appreciate nature and what better praise of nature than to attempt to emulate it with your art. The last thing I'm adding into this little floral scape is going to be a couple of butterflies. I live in the Santa Cruz County area and one of our main butterflies up here is the monarch butterfly. And down at Natural Bridges State Park in Santa Cruz, there is an area where the monarchs come hibernate every year before their trip all the way down to Mexico. And uh, part of what I got to do at my old job was support the monarch population. I find them so fascinating. They are endangered. And especially this year, the numbers are horrifyingly low. So if you are in the path of the migration of the monarch butterflies, plant some native milkweed. There are different types. Make sure yours is the native type and help encourage these populations of butterflies because we will be losing them if we don't help support them now. So I'm adding in a couple of bright orange butterflies just like the monarchs that I hold so dear. And uh, yeah, it was just a little bit of whimsy.
spray jelly roll pen and I'm outlining all of the different leaves and flowers and blooms. Um, I don't always do this with my paintings and actually it's very rare that I do. I just felt like this needed a little bit of cleaning up around the edges and outlining in a pen or even a uh, paint on a very thin brush can help make your paintings look just a little bit cleaner. I'm not necessarily going for a realistic look here, so outlining it does lend a little bit of a cartoonish quality, but I don't mind that here. I think it's actually a really beautiful thing. Um, here are a couple close-ups of me outlining with my jelly roll pen, and you can get a better idea for all of the different colors that I layered in to the leaves and the petals of this floral painting. so much fun doing this outlining it was very mindful very peaceful and um, you don't really have to think you just sort of let the pen flow along the lines that you think you want it to flow along and it just reminds me of when I was in school for my design degree a friend of mine had an idea of having the opposite of a coloring book where the book would come with all of the colors there and it was your job to do the outlining part, not necessarily the coloring part. So all you would need would be whatever pen you want and then you would go around each color and do the outlining. And this sort of reminded me of that because I had to make different decisions. Do I go around each different color stroke or do I just highlight the ones that I want? And it was kind of fun. It was a very peaceful, zen-like activity. This is about all I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed this little mini paint along. It didn't take me very long in real time, maybe a little over an hour. I did speed up the painting process for this video, but I just wanted to mention that it doesn't matter what you're painting, it doesn't matter what size you're painting, just taking the time to do your art uh, is a commendable thing. So. I'm hoping this little mini notebook will encourage me to do more painting and um, not feel like it has to be a big to-do. It can be little, it can be less than an hour, and you can still make some really beautiful things. And as they say, practice makes progress. Again, thank you so much for watching. Got any questions or comments or tips, please put them down in the comments below. And if you're interested in watching my journey with gardening, painting, bullet journaling, or any of the many, many things that catch my fancy, then please subscribe and follow along. Thanks so much. Bye.